What is up everyone, Stonepost34 here bringing you Growing Up with Stonepost. And uh, real quick about the gameplay, this is a game of Search and Destroy. We started out 0-2 in this game, and I think I had a win, or KD a 2-2. Two and two. I'm not a big Search and Destroy player, um, but this was uh, kind of a fun little game. Uh, last game I got into last night, so it's not so much about the gameplay, but just to let you know I'm running the Silenced FAMAS. Um, I, I can't. I think I have a dual wield as my secondary. I don't even use it. But anyway, and I have ghost on too, so so you know that. But anyway, I uh, left you guys with kind of a cliffhanger last time on growing up with Stone Post 34. Actually, I didn't do it intentionally. I just kind of ran out of time when I was uh, talking about some of the stories about when I grew up. So uh, if you haven't caught any of them, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check those out. Um, but just to give you a real quick update on that, uh, I grew up in Kansas. And we grew up in Park City, Kansas, which is a suburb of Wichita. In fact, kind of a, well, I wouldn't say funny, kind of a morbid part of that is uh, that was the same town BTK was from, the blind torture kill uh, serial killer who killed, I think, about 10 people in uh, Wichita during the 70s and 80s. And I think his last murder was in the 90s, but I'll leave a link to that in the description too. But um, one of my friends, he was uh, his scoutmaster. He was an elder at one of the churches. It was just kind of weird. Um, I never knew him, and I don't believe my parents knew him at the time. But anyway, back to that. Uh, my brother and I uh, hung out quite a bit. And this story is about my brother and I uh, getting the belt. So my dad had a, a skunk in his room that my mom made, a ceramic skunk, that he put all his change in. And uh, we had town and country uh, up, the, up the road about half a mile that my brother and I would walk to and, and get candy. Well, we didn't have any money. So what my brother did was he decided to go ahead and, and steal money from my dad. Little did we know, I mean, my dad's a pretty smart guy. He uh, realized he was losing money, so he went in on a Sunday night and counted all his money, didn't put any change back in the jar, or the skunk, uh, so he would know if any money was missing. And sure enough, he came back that next Saturday, decided to count his money, and uh, he was missing about $5 in change. And he actually count, he counted the coins. He knew which coins we took, too. So uh, I, I say I didn't take them, but I definitely benefited in the, uh, the bounty, the loot that my brother took. So I guess I was kind of guilty. So anyway, we're in our room uh, playing one evening. We shared a room, and my dad walks in, and he said, uh, I'm going to give you guys one chance, and uh, I want you to answer me honestly, and I want to know who took my money out of my skunk in my room. And... I said, well, I didn't, because I didn't. And then <laughs> my brother goes, well, I didn't. He goes, okay. Um, you guys are going to have to bend over the bed, and you're each getting the belt until I get the truth. Which sounds, it does sound pretty bad. Uh, so anyway, this goes on. We're bawling. We're crying. Um, I got the, I don't remember. I would say five, five, six, seven, eight times. And uh, we go back and forth. I'm crying. It, it did hurt a little bit, but I mean, he, I didn't have any marks left or anything. I think it was more the drama than anything. So uh, eventually, my brother finally says, I did it. And uh, my dad looks at him. You know what he says? He goes, I know. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I sat here and got the belt for literally 30 minutes. And what he did, it was horrible. It was like a concentration camp or maybe like a... Uh, an army camp where they, you know, trying to get the uh, the enemy to confess or tell them where where, where the uh, where their friends are, or whatever. But he would like he'd spank us, and then he'd leave the room, and then we'd sit there and talk. So I'm guessing he probably was hanging outside the door, which was probably brilliant on his part because I was probably saying, "Just tell him you did it." And I remember my brother goes, "You just tell him you did it. He won't be as mean to you." Because I was younger. But anyway, that was just kind of a fun story growing up. Uh, another story is, uh, is more about my grandfather. My grandfather uh, meant a lot to me. He taught me how to fish. He taught me how to do woodworking. I'm not that I'm very good at it, but he taught me a lot of cool stuff. And my mom was adopted, so my grandpa uh, was not my blood relative, but uh, he was, it, it didn't matter, put it that way. Really cool guy. So anyway, he was a farmer. Actually, he worked for Cessna where they built planes in Wichita, but he was a farmer. Uh, and had, well, there was some family acreage, had about 180 acres he farmed all together, but I think he only owned 80 acres uh, out near the Oklahoma border. So um, 
I don't know if you guys are, were raised in a farming community or not, and uh, not that I was so much, but we'd go and visit my grandfather. Uh, but I was about 12 at this time, and he asked me if I wanted to go out to the farm with him, which was really cool. I mean, this was before video games and all that, so we'd go out there, and he had combines, tractors, mopeds, and all sorts of cool stuff. So he'd let me drive, you know, the moped at 12, which wasn't such a big stretch. But anyway, so we're driving back to the co-op, and we're in his truck, and we're and we're headed down a dirt road, and we're it's about 15 minutes from his farm to the co-op. The co-op's where you get all your fertilizer, fertilizer seed. You can pick up a sandwich. It's kind of like a quick shop kind of deal out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so we're driving back, and um, he leans over to me and he says, "Greg, do you want to drive?" And I'm 12, and he had a big old Sierra GMC, really cool pickup for its day. And he said, do you want to drive? And I said, well, yeah. I mean, of course I wanted to drive. I'd driven a tractor. I'd driven um, mopeds and, and been with him on the combines and all that. So this was kind of cool. So, yeah, he let me drive. And so we, we're driving down the road. And, it, and I wasn't that big of a kid at that time. And it was a little hard to see over the steering wheel. I remember I could just see through the steering wheel and, uh, and barely I kind of had to lean forward and, and touch my toes on the end of the, of the pedals. So... Anyway, we're driving down the road, and things are going pretty smooth, and I'm holding it through the middle, and it, no one's out there, so it's not like I'm going to hit anybody. And I'll never forget this. He leans over to me, and he says, Hey, Greg, do you want to smoke my pipe? <laughs> it's not no, you know, not the wacky weed stuff, but he smoked a pipe, which I loved, and, and uh, I said, uh, Are you serious? He goes, No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that. That's one of my most fond memories of my grandfather is uh, him leaning over to me at 12 years old after he let me have this huge privilege of, of driving his, he got a new GMC every two years, l driving his new GMC truck and then leaning over to me and asking me if I wanted to smoke his pipe. I'm sure he thought that was hysterical, which I guess looking back at it, it was uh, it was pretty funny. But uh, the games winded down. We uh, we started at Oatwood 2 and, and we finished 4 and 3. But anyway, guys, hey, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to some of the stuff I just talked about, uh, some of the past videos about growing up, and then also leave a link uh, to the BTK if you guys didn't know about that. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. This is Stonepost34. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. Take care.